Howdy, how's it going? Well, today's video is all about the ganjo here. Normally a banjo just has four strings. This is a ganjo, which is more similar to a guitar with six strings. If you haven't seen any of the videos yet for Sunday afternoon, I want you to go back and kind of skim through. The first episode, we talked about the pre-production steps for recording this song, Sunday Afternoon, that my wife wrote. But every week's video, Friday at 3 o'clock, here on Making Music, we're going to be showing you every step that we take along the way. So if you haven't seen the video on the drums, the piano, or the bass guitar, go back and just skim through those and then come back to this one, because today's video is all about recording the ganjo. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. I would also really appreciate it. Here on my channel, Making Music, you also see some other videos about how I go into setting up for recording. Some of those usually come out on Tuesdays. We've had videos about tuning the drums and things like that. I've also started a new video series, kind of giving some mixing tips, especially if you're starting out and don't know things about EQ or compression, just the real basics of recording. You want to check those videos out on the channel as well. Don't forget to have fun making music. Now let's get started with the ganjo on the song Sunday Afternoon. First thing, I'll talk about this instrument here. This six string banjo is by Washburn. It is not expensive at all. It's pretty much as low as you can get for a six string banjo. Reason is, I don't foresee us having many songs at all where this banjo is a feature instrument. Things like acoustic guitar and drums, we wouldn't mind having some nicer quality instruments. But whatever this banjo may be lacking, I'm sure it will either go unnoticed to the majority of people or we can deal with those things as I'll mention in the video. Most of it just really comes down to the issues that I have with keeping this thing in tune, which I'm sure you'll hear that on the recording. But essentially, it is a banjo with six strings. Each of the strings tunes just like a guitar tune. So we have the strings E, A, D, G, B, E. The only other thing I want to say about this one is that it's actually an open back banjo. I didn't know this before I got this instrument, but really with an open back banjo, what I'm hearing compared to banjos I've played in the past, with the open back, it's so much louder. So to me, in a recording situation, this may be a negative because if I make this banjo too loud, you're going to start hearing the sound of the room. In fact, the intro to this video Normally I have a separate microphone set up when I'm playing the acoustic. This banjo is so loud that all I had to do was simply turn this SM7, face it a different direction, not even directly at the banjo, and it picked up just fine. The other things you'll notice, just kind of about the setup, you see a few things behind me here that look just a little bit different. This thing right here is called a reflection filter. Normally with this thing, we have our microphone that's mounted right in here. As you can see, it kind of creates a dome around whatever microphone you're using. I didn't have the microphone placed in here. It was somewhere nearby, but it's really just a safety precaution to make sure I keep the reflections away. This area over here is where I actually recorded the banjo, which you'll see in a video in just a second. But the only other thing I want to say is that we have the uh, Warm Audio U87. I've talked about this before is the room mic on the drums, but I use that to record. You'll see that in just a second. And then here in the room, I've hung the black blanket that you saw on the drums video. Used to be in the living room. I still have the hooks in there. So I've got two hooks in the ceiling here to hang this blanket. And as you can see, it's just very thick. Okay. So again, when I'm recording in here, even though I've got the acoustic treatment all around, I like to hang the blanket just to catch anything extra. All right, I'm going to put this up and then let's jump into the video. I use the iPhone again 
uh, just to take a video the whole time that I was playing. As you can see here, I've got the iPad set up with Studio One again, just so I can easily hit record. I'm using my in-ears plugged into the headphone extension. Being in here in this room, I don't have to worry too much about what I'm hearing in my ears not sounding the same out of the speakers. This room is very dead, especially with that blanket hanging up and the carpet on the floor. So I'm not using the gun mufflers I've used in other videos. So as you see, we have the iPad there. I'm using the U87 from Warm Audio. It's in cardioid, so everything is being recorded that's facing toward my face, basically and everything behind it is wanting to reject. I've got the computer and speakers over here, so I really don't want those reflections getting in. But like I was saying with this banjo, it's got an open back, so what you'll see is I'm pressing the banjo into my stomach and trying to use my stomach to cover the sound hole. Sounds counterproductive, but as you'll see, this banjo is very loud, the microphone is very sensitive, and I'm just trying to give it as direct a sound I can without it having a lot of chorusy reverb sounds going on. All right, so let's find a spot here. You're going to be hearing this is the sound of the iPhone microphone, not the microphone itself. I'll explain that in just a little bit, but let's listen to a little bit. My thought was that whenever the piano is picking apart an arpeggiated pattern, then the banjo would strum. And whenever the piano was playing block chords, the banjo would pick. So they kind of bounce back and forth. I really want the banjo and the piano to bounce back and forth. And then the acoustic guitar next week, next week I'm playing on the acoustic guitar doing more of the strumming rhythm guitar stuff. <laughs> All right, so that was with the guitar pick. In order to fix that issue that I knew was gonna come up later in the mix, I thought that I would use the capo. Using the capo on the guitar or the banjo would be able to separate the two. So I put the capo on the fifth fret of the banjo and played basically G-shaped chords, knowing that the, I'm gonna let the acoustic guitar have the root position chord stuff. And by being so high up, I could try out some different things on the banjo. So let's take a listen to that. So that's the gist of it. Now with the banjo, again, I want the banjo to be an auxiliary instrument. I know I want the lead vocal to be the main thing that when people are listening to the song, I want them to hear the lead vocal. I want the piano to stand out as probably number two as far as areas of importance. There's a few parts on the drums, like I really like the side stick and the fill. I want that to come out. The bass, I uh, really enjoy that. As I am adding instruments, I got to keep in mind... I want everything to kind of have its own place and its own area of the frequency spectrum. So let's jump over to Studio One. Let's take a listen. All right, as you can see, I'm wearing different clothes, okay? This is two days after I recorded the video talking about how awesome my banjo recording was on the song Sunday Afternoon. But here's what happened. So the first thing, uh, every now and then Lana and I will export this song and we'll listen to it in our car, especially after I've added another instrument, just to be thinking toward the mixing stage of stuff. Here's what happened with the banjo. So looking at the screen here on Studio One, I re-recorded the banjo, but I didn't do it for no reason at all. I'm not, I, I know I'm kind of like, I want things to be perfect and as good as they can possibly be. 
But here's what happened. So I dragged in the iPhone video that I recorded. So as I was playing banjo, I had the warm audio, the WA87 microphone was pointed at my banjo. It's a really nice microphone. Microphone did nothing wrong. But as I was listening to the iPhone recording of the banjo, I thought, well, that's weird because I actually like the sound of the iPhone microphone better than the WA87. So check this out. This is just on the verse one here. We're going to loop this section. Listen to the WA87 that was recorded with the condenser microphone of the banjo. Check it out. Okay, this is going to be a little difficult to compare because it's not the same parts being played on the banjo. That's half of it. But aside from the notes that I'm playing, listen to how much clearer the attack is of the banjo coming through the iPhone microphone on its take. Here's the same verse one. All right, so what I'm hearing through that, I'm hearing that the iPhone, it was over my shoulder to the right. The iPhone was actually picking up because I was using a pick for one thing and because I was picking the notes, but the iPhone is picking up a clearer, more direct sound than the condenser mic. And what I think what I was doing, the microphone was set to cardioid. I think the microphone might have been ported, pointed more towards my knee than the banjo itself. So that would have had to do with the clarity. Also, if I'm finger picking, I don't have hardly any nails. I don't know if you can see that, but I don't have hardly any nails. Now, I used to have some for school, but without having any nails, the attack's just not going to be there when playing, especially the banjo. So I knew that I wanted to play this with the pick. I like the sound of the iPhone comparing those two. I like the sound of the iPhone better. I just wish I could have gone back and recorded a different take with the iPhone because what happened throughout the song, there were too many spots with the iPhones recording. As you can see on the screen here, they were just getting too many spots where I had to mute the whole section because I either missed a chord, played a wrong note, or I just knew that I wasn't really, that wasn't the main take. So I just kind of flippantly kept it recording and didn't have any notes that were usable. So I set up, I put, I put the iPhone on the desk and totally was intending to do one more, let me do one take all the way through the song with the iPhone and let's see what happens. But here's what I also did. I, I set this SM7 was right here for when I was speaking during the video. I decided I want to back up just in case this iPhone thing doesn't work out. So I actually ended up using the SM7 to record this new pass and take a listen to it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to flip between the banjo being recorded with this SM7. I literally took it like this, used it just like I used it on the intro of this video. Take a listen to it on verse one. I tried to match the volumes with all these. They're also panned hard right. But take a listen to the SM7, then the iPhone, and then the WA87. And let me know in the comments which one you prefer. Like smoke against a clear blue sky I'd never seen my daddy cry iPhone eighty seven. SM7. Scrapped everything I did from the session with the Warm Audio 87. And I recorded using this SM7 here at my desk. 
if I had spent hours, spent hours sitting over there recording with the W87, figuring out parts and stuff, it better be worth it to re-record. And I believe that it was. So uh, take a listen to the song now that we've added the banjo. You'll hear the banjo on the right side. So if you're wearing headphones, the stuff will be a lot clearer, especially since it's not been mixed yet. But uh, enjoy Sunday afternoon. Here is with the banjo track added. And thank you so much for watching. Here we go. Hey, are my eyes jumping? If yes, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. But either way, check back with us next Friday at 3 p.m. for some more content and videos. Thank you so much for watching. See ya.